Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Can we stand up for a change? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name because you are teaching us. You are injecting something into us. And Lord, we know you'll develop everyone to their highest, greatest potential in Jesus' name. Every brother minister here, every sister minister here, Lord, I pray you will impart yourself unto them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you'll confirm your power in every life, the anointing in every life, and we will go forth and do exploits in your name in jesus name make us strong establish your people and let your work prosper in every hand in jesus name Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. We can be seated. This time now, we're looking at the message, the development of an effective minister. When God calls us and we respond to the call of God, a period of development will follow. And before the period of development finishes, we might begin the ministry. And the development must go on until we are fully developed. And we are coming to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. And we always keep Christ before us as a model of ministry. If you are called to be a teacher, he was a teacher sent from God. If you are called to be a pastor, he is the great pastor, the good shepherd. If you are called to be an evangelist, he is the model evangelist. If you are called to be a prophet, he was the great prophet among the people of God. If you are called to be an apostle, he is the apostle and the beginner and the finisher of our faith. Whatever ministry you are called to, the ministry of help, and the ministry of healing, or the ministry of deliverance, or the ministry of saving the lost, establishing them in the kingdom. Christ ministered in all the ministries. And then you're looking at Jesus as the model before you. That he will make you the kind of minister that you ought to be. And reproduce himself. 
in you. It tells us in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of of men. It says there are two parts to the contract. There are two sides to the covenant. There are two ends to the whole process. The first end, human you follow me the second side divine i will make you fishers of men when he makes us ministers fishers of men or whatever ministry whatever mold he wants to build us into. There are things that are common to every minister. There are things that you need to check out in your ministry. Whether you are fulfilling the purpose, the reason of the call of God upon your life. What are you called to? What am I called to? What are we called to? Whatever church, whatever denomination, whatever assembly we belong to, number one, we are called to exalt Christ. You cannot contradict that. Whatever your ministry. Are you an apostle? Exalt Christ. Are you a prophet? Exalt Christ. Are you an evangelist? Exalt Christ. Are you a pastor teacher? Exalt Christ. Are you a prayer warrior? Exalt Christ. Are you a musician, singer? Exalt Christ. Are you working with the children? Exalt Christ. Are you involved with academic people, students, whether high school or universities? Exalt Christ. Are you ministering in the village? Exalt Christ. Are you reaching out to the political echelon of the society? Exalt Christ. We have been called in ministry that we will exalt Christ. Number two, evangelize the world. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We should so do a ministry in such a way that we are evangelizing the world. There are sinners out there. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the Lord has called you and I into the ministry. And if our ministry is not evangelizing, we are being derailed. To be derailed, it means the train has gone over outside the rail. And when a train like that is derailed, many lives might be lost. Every opportunity you have, in ministry, evangelize the world. Number three, enlighten the converts. When you reach out and you evangelize the world, those people that come to know the Lord, you will enlighten them. You will disciple them. And you will show them the life they ought to live from now on. Number four, edify the church. Be a blessing to the church. Be a blessing to every section of the church. Be a blessing to every individual in the church. Edify the church. You know, many times we forget ourselves and we forget the reason for ministry. And then we begin to, now you're going to write two words, write the word U S E. What's that? Use. Write the word A B before that, use. What does it become? abuse that a b is the beginning of the word abnormal When you take that word abnormal, you take it away, what you have left is normal. When you leave normal and you're holding on to the ab, and then you're trying to use your gift in ministry, you abuse the ministry. When you have a gift, whatever gift it may be, you see it to bless the people, to edify the church, to build up the church. Don't do anything abnormal that will make you end up abusing your privilege, abusing your gift, abusing your ministry. Edify the church. Number five, equip 
believers he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ equip believers to do what to walk with god to witness for the lord and to work labor work for god number six establish the church when the lord has called us to ministry he has called us to the ministry to establish the church. Make it strong. Make it steadfast. Make it steady. Make the church a standing church, a solid church, a steadfast church, not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine establish the church number seven enlarge the church get involved with church growth don't just be satisfied with the moderate number you have there are millions of sinners outside waiting for us to reach out to them and bring them into the church to enlarge the church. And so, whatever ministry we may get involved in, here the Lord is telling us, I've called you, I have commissioned you, and you now need to make up your mind that you will respond to that call favorably. And then you will do what he wants you to do by being committed, by being consecrated, and by continuing in ministry. We come back to Matthew chapter 4 verse 19 again. And he says unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That word make, I will make you fishers of men. You don't want to think about some ministers that the Lord actually made fishers of men. And you want to understand when something is made, when something is molded, when something is created, I will make. Before I show you some examples, who do you think you are now? How do you think about yourself? Many times, many of us will think about ourselves, I am not as good as that minister.
I am not as effective as that preacher. I don't have as much understanding as that lady evangelist. I don't have enough boldness. I don't have the same courage as that David. I don't have as much anointing as that Samson. I don't have as much healing power, healing gift as that Paul. That's where we begin. But the Lord said, just give me yourself, who you are, at this time now. And I can start at the point where you feel you are. And I will make you fishers of men. I dare tell you here, the Lord's hand is upon you. The Lord's anointing will multiply upon your life. I want you to have a dream, a vision, an aspiration, a desire. Pick out a minister that the Lord is laying on your heart. It might be a minister in the Bible. It might be a minister you have read about in church history might be a contemporary minister today and you say lord i am far from that minister but i put myself in your hand you will make me this desire i have you mold me into a kind of effective minister i see it and i'm going to arrive there And you will get there. I said you will get there. When God called Moses, he felt unqualified. He felt incompetent. He felt incapable. I cannot... I am not able, just like many people feel today. And then God said in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee. The word I want you to notice there is the word make. I have made thee. A God to Pharaoh and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. When you look at that verse. Moses had a challenge before him. He looked at the greatness, the enormity of that challenge. And he said, I cannot. I am not able. And God said, who has made man's mouth? Who has made the dumb and the blind? I will be with your mouth. And you will go to everyone I will send you. And now God said, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh.
instantaneously courage came into him power came into him might came into him wisdom came into him and he confronted pharaoh and he never bent he never bowed until he achieved he will achieve and then he said and I've given Aaron your brother to you to be your spokesman. Do you realize when Moses was called into the ministry, he started with nothing, he ended up with everything. Everything you need for ministry, the Lord will give you when the time arrives. You see, there are many people, they are waiting until they have this, 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 and that. If you are waiting, you may wait too long. Don't wait. I have given you thy brother Aaron. Why? Why, Lord, have you given me only Aaron? I need more. No, you don't need more now. All you need now, you need a partner, Aaron, to go to Pharaoh and then to talk to the children of Israel. And then they came out of the wilderness and God gave him the Levites. And then they needed to make sacrifice and God gave him the sons of, of Aaron. And then he needed to build the tabernacle and God gave him the gold and the silver. And God gave him Basileel. And he needed a warrior to go and fight the Amalekites. And God gave him Joshua to fight the Amalekites. He does not give you everything on the first day of ministry. He gives you what you need for the present hour. And as you walk by faith, all along the journey, when you need money, then they will give the money. When you need a car, he will give you the car. When you need the gospel van, he will give you the gospel van. But you know somebody is kneeling and is well, God, give me a aeroplane. You don't need a aeroplane now. If you need it, when you need it, it will come. You will keep on walking what you need at the very moment that you need it, the Lord will give unto you. I have made you a God unto Pharaoh and I've given Aaron to be your prophet, your assistant, your spokesman. in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 18 for behold i have made thee it's the lord that makes us and when you follow the lord he makes you the man the woman you ought to be I have made thee this day a defensed city and an iron pillar and bracing walls against the whole land against the king of Judah and against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof and against the people of the land.
Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 Son of man I have made thee Watchman Over the house unto the house of Israel Therefore hear the word at my mouth And give them warning from me We're talking about the development, the making, the molding of an effective minister. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the process of development. When the Lord lays his hand upon you, and he decides he wants to mold you to make you to develop you he goes through a process what process does he go through number one conversion he will first of all convert you That conversion is in two parts. Number one, conversion from a sinner to a saint. That affects your life. That affects your behavior. That affects your character. Conversion from a sinner to a saint. Number two, there is conversion from a saint to a servant of God. Conversion from a member to a minister. Conversion from a sheep to a shepherd. Conversion from an individual in the family to a father, a mother in the family. When the Lord calls us and he wants to develop us to be an effective minister, there is a process in that development and it begins with conversion. Number two, instruction. Have you seen how the Lord Jesus Christ brought the disciples to himself? They were converted. Lord, Father, God, you give them to me. Thine they were, but you have given them to me. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. They have been converted. And now you begin to instruct them. Instruction. And you learn quite in different men in many ways. You might have gone to Bible school. That's part of the deal. Instruction. And you're very faithful in your church going to Sunday school. Instruction. And you listen to your pastor's messages, your, the messages of your local pastor's instruction. You read the Bible and then Moses instructs you, Paul instructs you, Isaiah instructs you, David instructs you. And with all the instruction that you gather from all these great men of God in the Bible and the great men of God today, the Lord is passing you through the process of development.
Number three, intercession. Jesus Christ in forming, in making, in developing, in molding his own disciples to become apostles. He interceded for them. He prayed for them. He prayed for all of them together. He prayed for them individually according to their needs. In John, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. In Luke chapter 22, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee. And so, there is intercession. The Lord is praying for you. And now Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God. And what's he doing? He's praying for you. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever live to make intercession for them. Talk to the person by your side. Jesus is praying for me. I am not discouraged. I am not defeated. I am not regretting that I am in the ministry. There is no problem that will overcome me. There is no situation that will overwhelm me. Because Jesus is praying for me. And God the Father always answers the prayer of Jesus. I cannot fail. I will not fail because the Father will answer the prayer of Jesus for me. Number seven, continuation. We're going to continue. You see, when you're all alone by yourself, if you fall, who will lift you up? But if we are together and we're moving on together, when I'm discouraged, you are there to encourage me. And when you are disappointed, I am there to wipe your tears away. Let's continue together. Continue in love. Continue in grace. And continue in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a process. Thank God today, you are not what you used to be yesterday. And tomorrow, you will not be like you are today. If you are weak today, you'll be strong tomorrow. The Lord is impacting our lives. Let us move on. I come to number two. Passion for development. Passion passion how do you know a person that has passion 
Number one, there is a desire. You desire an effective ministry. You have a passion. You want to be somebody. You have come into the ministry. You are not satisfied with the level of what you are doing now. You desire. You desire an effective ministry. That leads you to inquire. You now inquire from effective ministers. Inquire. You're asking questions. I believe the Lord is calling me to heal the sick. How are you doing it? Inquire. I believe the Lord is uh, calling me to have an effective women ministry. How do you do it in deeper life in your church? Inquire. I believe the Lord is helping me and leading me to reach the students. And I know you are doing a good work in that area. Inquire. How are you doing it? I believe the Lord is still leading me to the villages and uh, to those demon infested and demon possessed localities. I know you're doing it effectively and the Lord is calling me to do it. How can I do it? Inquire. You must keep on inquiring. You follow your desire with inquire. Number three, you admire established ministries. Don't criticize them. Don't cut them down. Don't crush them. Don't oppose them. A minister was talking to me outside Africa. We were ministering together. And then we sat on the table. And he said he was called into the midst of some ministers to share with them. And after sharing with them, because God has been using him in the ministry of healing the sick. And in the ministry of casting out devils. And multitudes are actually coming to know the Lord through him. And then with those ministers, he began to share. And one of the ministers there opposed him, was angry, was furious, and told him to sit down. Do you think, you know, that's possible today? And the minister who was talking to me, he didn't abuse him back or insult him back. He just looked at him with love, wondering, why is he knocking me? Why is he opposing me? Why is he criticizing? What have I done? But he went to his room and he prayed said god i don't know why that man was so hot against me what have i done please speak to him And the second day, he told me, that man who criticized him came back. And he said, can I talk to you? I said, please, you can talk to me. And he said, I'm sorry I opposed you yesterday. The Lord convicted me that actually, when you were sharing all those things, I became envious and jealous, angry and bitter. It's not because you are wrong, it's because I had a bad spirit, a bad attitude forgive me no more jealousy no more envy and they reconciled together
Have we been jealous of one another? Envious of one another? I cannot do what you do. You cannot do what I do. The hand cannot do what the feet is doing. The eyes cannot do what the ear is doing. And the ear cannot do what the eyes are doing. There's no problem. There's, there's no room for jealousy. You are a great man in your ministry. You are a good woman in your ministry. What the Lord has appointed you to do, you are doing it effectively. Stay in it. And then, as you see other ministries that can help you, you admire those established ministries and we should be able to come to one another because you admire the people who are doing something number four perspire that means so we'll switch that means you will study. That means you will run. That means you will do something. There is no success. There is no progress without perspiration. You will perspire. You might have to read. You might have to pray. You might even have to fast. You might have to attend conferences. You might have to do something to develop yourself. Perspire. Number five, require. That's praying. Require. You're praying to the Lord. Oh Lord, I have only one life to live. I want that life to be a success. I want that life to amount to something in the kingdom of God. You require from the Lord. You pray to the Lord. And you pray consistently, fervently, with all your heart. Lord except i have this like rachel prayed give me children or i die give me effectiveness in ministry or there is no reason for living you require you pray Then, number six, you acquire. What does that mean? There may be some cassettes that you need to acquire, you need to buy. There may be some books that you need to acquire. There may be some helpful materials, a good Bible, a good concordance, a good Bible dictionary, a good uh, Bible atlas, a good materials that you need to acquire or knowledge. In these days of the computer, maybe you will need a computer. You acquire, you acquire the knowledge, you acquire the materials, you acquire the aids and the helps that will help you to move on in ministry. Number seven, inspire. By giving yourself to the ministry, inspire others to minister. By being very active, up and doing, not getting tired, not getting flabby, 
but by being up and doing let your level of energy and activity inspire all the people to their best or greatest highest level of potential And that will show your passion for development. You really want to develop yourself. You desire, you inquire, you admire, you perspire, you require, you acquire, you inspire. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's part of the perspiration that you want to be your very best in ministry and you study to show yourself. Approved unto God. What an assignment that is. There are times you are approved by your people. But approval of people does not mean you are approved of God. Endeavor and labor and study and perspire to make sure that you are approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, properly, dissecting, interpreting, applying, dividing the word of truth. In Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 10. that i may know him here is a man that had been preaching the word and the lord had used him in the ministry of the apostle and the prophet the evangelist the pastor and the teacher yet he said i'm not through yet that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death And if Paul the Apostle was still aspiring, that means he had a strong desire. His aspiration tells us that he actually wanted to be more than he was. And to do more than he had done. And to go farther than he had gone. That's why he said, yes, I know him as Savior. I want to know him more. I know him as my sanctifier. I want to know him more. I know him as my Lord and Master. I want to know him more. And I want to know the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable. 
unto him even in his death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let me illustrate it to you like this. There was somebody who had read about Charles G. Finney. And he desired that he would want to have a kind of revival ministry that Charles G. Finney had. And he saw the great things the Lord had done through him. And he would be looking at him, looking at him, reading his books, hearing his messages, following after his steps. Until he didn't know when he started speaking like Feeney, acting like Feeney, ministering like Feeney, becoming a revival evangelist, that a, rev a revivalist and an evangelist like Charles G. Feeney. beholding and looking and gazing upon and concentrating upon when you have a mentor that he is a leader that you appreciate his ministry and then you say i don't know those people who have died but i know this particular leader and mentor today and i want the lord to conform me into the same image and you keep on looking you keep on gazing you keep on concentrating on him and the ministry you read his books, you listen to the tapes, you watch the methods, and you have no contradictory opinion within you. You just appreciate everything that is going on. You will not know until the Lord will change you into the same image. Here it says, we're looking on the Lord and gazing upon him and getting everything from his life. The grace, the goodness, the godliness, the glory. Then we are being changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. in second timothy chapter one reading from verse six and from verse seven wherefore i put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of god which is in thee by putting on of my hands
stir it up. Make sure you are living right. And then you can stir up the gift of God that is in you. Don't forget those words. Make sure you're living right. Because something arch anointing. And even though something arch anointing he slept on Delilah's laps, he went into immorality, at least to a level. And then he revealed the secret of the Lord to an enemy. And his heir, the symbol of his anointing, was cut short and cut up and scraped. And then Delilah said, the Philistines are upon you something. And he went out to shake himself as at other times. That is to stir up the gift of God in him. But it will not work. The power had gone. If a person is living in sin, stirring up the gift, you will not work. That's why I said, make sure you're living according to the word of God. And then you can stir up the gift of God that is in you. In verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. You are called to preach. And as you, the Lord has prepared you, are giving you the message to preach. As you come in, you look at the congregation. And then some things, maybe whatever you see in your congregation, made you afraid. Will I be able to deliver the message? That fear. Who gave it to you? Not God. God gave you a message. God gave you a congregation. And he told you to preach the message to that congregation. And if fear comes to you, you understand. That spirit of fear is not from God. Throw it back to the place it came from. But the Lord has given us the spirit of power. Give me a good amen. amen. And of love and of a sound mind. Number one is the process of development. Number two is the passion for development. Number three, the pillars of development. The pillars of development. As you want to develop yourself to be the effective, competent, aggressive, successful, progressive minister you ought to be, there are some pillars that must be in your life. The pillars that will support your development. Without those pillars, the whole house will fall. What are those pillars? Number one, uncorrupted doctrine. Number two, unshakable decision. 
Number three, uncompromising discipleship. Number four, undiminished devotion. Number five, unfading desire. Number six, unwavering determination. Unwavering determination. Come what may. In rain and sunshine. In the midst of friends or foes. Up or down. In the village or in the city. Here is what I have. Determination. The mountain may look high. But I will climb that mountain. I said we will climb that mountain. I read of some mountain climbers. They were to climb the mountain. They tried. They couldn't make it. They came back. They tried again. They couldn't make it. They came back. They tried again. They couldn't make it. They came back. So they sat down. They were discouraged. We announced to the people back at home that we're going to this mountain to climb B to the top. Are we going to get back home and announce to them we are failures? And so they all sat down, discouraged, dejected, and depressed. All of a sudden one of them rose up and he went to the base of the mountain and he looked at the mountain and he kept on looking at the mountain and he got a message he came back to the rest of the people he said friends i got a message what message have you got this mountain cannot grow beyond its height but we can grow beyond our height where we have been and where we are today we cannot climb but we are growing and the mountain will not grow. We will grow, we will climb. In a few months, they grew in energy. They grew in strength. They grew in vitality. They grew in wisdom. They climbed that mountain. Your mountain is not growing, but you are growing. What you are not able to do today, you will do tomorrow. And if you have that determination that I'm having, unwavering determination, I will climb my mountain, you will climb the mountain in Jesus' name. Number seven of the pillars, unblameable deeds. Unreproachable deeds, your character, your conduct, your behavior, your manners, your interaction with people, especially with the opposite sex. Unblameable deeds is a pillar as the Lord is developing us.
number eight on clouded days on clouded days you know you wake up in the morning and somebody said something against you that filtered into your ears and then it spoils your day and instead of having a bright sky and with a desire to rise up and climb your mountain the skies are clouded and everywhere is dark because of what so and so said because of what so and so did but make your days on clouded days and make up your mind whatever they say let them tell me out loud let them say They have liberty to say what they want to say. You have liberty to keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do. They have liberty to do whatever they want to do. You have liberty to, to keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do. The fish has liberty to swim. And the bird has liberty to fly. That's what they are made for. And the people that are still sinners, what can they do? They can only sin because they are sinners. That's their nature. Let them do what they do. And you keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do. Let your days be unclouded days. Number nine, unforgettable dreams. The Lord has given you a dream. He gave Joseph a dream that the Lord will raise him up to a place of preeminence, to a place of prominence, to a place of a prince. A prince in a prominent place, a preeminent place. The brother sold him. He didn't forget his dream. The Ishmaelites handed him over to, the, to Potiphar. He didn't forget his dream. Potiphar's wife told a lie against him. He didn't forget his dream. They threw him into the prison. He didn't forget his dream. He came out of the prison. He didn't forget his dream. He got married and started having children. He didn't forget his dream. He collected all the foodstuffs in Egypt and was selling to the people. His brothers had not come yet. He didn't forget his dream. Two years into the time of the famine then the brothers came and the dream became fulfilled Whatever you go through in life, make sure that your dreams are unforgettable. Here we are today, but we're going up. I said we're going up. Yeah. Establish the pillars of development and we will meet at the top.
Rise up and let us pray.